Hey y'all, thanks for stopping back by the garage and checking out what we got going on. Today I'm going to show you how to change a head gasket and a single cylinder flathead engine. Now this is the same for push mowers, riding tractors, everything, any generators, as long as it's a flathead, it's basically the same process, just different sizes. So let's get over here and uh, we'll get the wrenching. Alright y'all, first things first. I'm going to tell you, show you how you can tell if you have a bad head gasket. Get some light in there. Let's see if you guys can see. Right in there, past the, uh, right in that area. If I don't wash it out too much. Get the light back this way a little bit more. Right there, right there behind, between those two, that fuel line and that governor arm, you can see it's wet right there. Come around the front of the motor, you can see it's wet. If you look up here on top of the engine, around this head bolt, it's also wet. Very good indicator that you've got a bad head gasket. So, get you guys in the stand, we'll start getting these covers and stuff off, and uh, I'll show you how to get this thing changed. All right, y'all. This is a uh, Cub Cadet. It's my 108 that I plow snow with. And of course, you know, it's always the mechanics' vehicles that get the last attention. You know, it's starting to get colder here in the Big O, and we're gonna need this thing because that weight stuff's gonna start falling. My suggestion when you're doing these head gaskets and stuff like this, don't use power tools. Um, especially on the head bolts. I've seen them where they where they're stuck and uh, you'll snap them right off. At least when if you're doing it by hand, you can kind of feel if they're starting to get a little tight stiff or whatever so um, of course I lost my uh, lost my 9 sixteenths all right ah oh, found it it's in my pocket good <laughs> now I'll tell you too on this motor here for this engine and this tractor I'm technically the third owner on it this was my dad's tractor years ago and he bought it off the original owner so this engine has never been a part that I know of to be rebuilt or anything so we're gonna we're gonna check it out and uh, do the head gasket head gaskets on them are really cheap so all right can you guys see here get you zoomed in here a little bit right there all that wet black stuff is a really really good indicator of a blown head gasket so all right I got one more bolt over here I need to get out uh, it's 7 16 let me grab a wrench I'll get that out and uh, we'll keep moving on to get the rest of it apart all right y'all now I'm gonna, need a, I'm gonna need a deep well 916th. Make sure you remember where those are at if they come out. Oh, and them things are just finger tight. Ain't no wonder they were leaking. You know, one of these days, y'all, I'm going to have to take a minute to myself and clean my shop because I've been going and going and going and uh, I got stuff scattered everywhere, tool-wise. Oh yeah, 
this. All these are snugged. Now I, they only torque to 30 foot pounds, so it's not much, but these two over here being loose. Oh yeah. That will definitely put a crimp on your uh head gasket pin pinch down, so alright, let me grab my impact. I'm gonna impact those out because they're nice and loose. And I know they're not gonna snap off. The ones you gotta watch for are the ones right next to the exhaust manifold. For some reason, those are the ones that seem like always bind up. Probably from the excess heat and everything. Alright, look at that. We are cooking with gas now, y'all. I'm telling you. Now all these head bolts should be the same length. If you want, you can lay them out in the pattern just so that you get them back in the right holes. But make sure you get the washers with them. You do need these washers and they are kind of a special washer. They're thicker than normal ones. Alright. Got all them. Yep. Just going to take a little that. That didn't take nothing to to uh, I got to finish taking that bolt out of there y'all. The top part is slotted. For some reason, this one is not. It'll be fun to get my fat fingers in there and get that started, but hey. Alright. There it is. We're going to reach in here. Make sure we get the two washers off the studs. And she don't look as bad as what I thought she was going to look. But, yeah. You can see right along, all along there, that whole side was leaking, so we definitely weren't getting any compression on that. See if we can get this whole gasket popped up out of there. Oh yeah, it's all just super wet, all along there. So, alright, I'm going to grab me some cleaner, we're going to get this cleaned up, and uh, we'll get that new gasket put on there. Alright y'all, I got that block all cleaned up. And uh, I just used a brass wire wheel on the block itself. This is a cast iron, so it's real hard to hurt them uh, with it. But the aluminum, you want to make sure you got a light touch because you don't want to gall that up or anything and, you know, make it where it's not flat and even and everything. So uh, just be careful with that. If you got an aluminum block like on a push mower or something like that, just be gentle. So, alright. There's our new head gasket. Get that oriented the right way. It should be just like that. I'm going to drop it down over that. Butumus, butumus. Alright. Put our head back on here. it all the way down on there and we're gonna get these head bolts all started I'll get that done we'll bring y'all back all right y'all got them all hand tightened down just ran down and just touch and we're gonna tighten them in two torque settings uh, like I said it's 30 foot pounds so we're gonna start out with 20 and I don't know what the proper sequence is you know, but as long as you go cross pattern, you should be fine. And this is one thing, this and flywheel nuts. You know, some people say, oh, you don't need to, you don't need to torque them. You just tighten them down. Well, I prefer to have the, the torque on it, so. 
I need to get my extension wherever I may have laid that. Should be able to get it with this one. here and do this one back here and do let's do this one up here and do this one This last one right here. All right, that's basically how you do it. I'm gonna shut the camera off. I'm gonna go around them again, 30 foot pounds, and then uh, we'll bring you back for the next step. All right, y'all, <clears throat> got that uh, head bolt all torqued down to 30 foot pounds. Dump some fresh fuel in her. Um, let's see if she'll fire up and run. Turn the fuel on. That always helps. All right. All right, y'all. Got the booster pack on here. I'm gonna give her a little shot of helping hand. I know there's an issue with the carburetor, so let's uh. gonna run good so I'm gonna need to pull that carburetor off that'll probably be another video um, I think the float's stuck on it so there you have it easy peasy got the head gasket replaced hey right, y'all that's gonna do it for this video hopefully you guys found it helpful I'm showing you that, you know it's super easy to change your head gasket in your small engine nothing to be intimidated about or anything uh, honestly I think it's easier than you know doing the carburetor work so uh, that's all there is to it uh, diagnosing it real easy you know just look for that black sludge and you know or you know carbon blowing out either one will big big clue that uh, you got a blown head gasket so anyways really hope it help really hope to help some guys out um, if it did and you like the video please give it the thumbs up it does help the channel out and uh, makes it so i can keep putting these videos out for y'all so appreciate it and uh we'll catch you all on the next one keep wrenching